This is an HP Elite Desk G3. It's got an i5-7500T and 8 gigs of RAM. It's great for basic office tasks like emailing, video conferencing, spreadsheets, browsing the web, etc. But what if you wanted to take a break from work and play some retro games? Now you could install RetroArch, but some people think it's a little confusing. Uh, you could install individual emulators, but then going back and forth can be annoying as well. You could install Batocera on a separate USB drive and boot up from that drive every time you want to play retro games. But if you want to easily play retro games within Windows, you want to use Retrobat. Retrobat uses Emulation Station, RetroArch, and other standalone emulators to create an easy front end to use within Windows. It's the perfect all-in-one retro game solution for within Windows. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up. You're going to need some ROMs. I can't tell you where to get them, but Google is your friend. Okay, here we are on our mini PC. I'm going to open up Chrome, and I am going to search for Retrobat to find the official web page. There it is. Okay, they redid their website. There's a new uh, there's a new page, a new web address. Here it is. We're going to click on that. And we're going to find the download link right here and follow the instructions to download Retrobat. This next page is going to give you some more info about Retrobat and what it can do. Uh, read through it. Take some time to go through it. And now you're going to click here. And the R going to ask you for a donation. This is totally optional. I do encourage you give them a little bit of money if you can. And then you're going to download right here. And then you're just going to let it download and give it some time. Once it's done, you're going to click to install. Uh, Windows is asking me to make sure this is safe, which it is. So I'm going to click through these steps to um, install anyway. And we're just going to follow the instructions. This may take a few minutes, so I'm just going to skip ahead. And when it's done finishing up, it's going to ask you to create a shortcut. I would recommend doing that so you could always find it very easily on your desktop. And now you will see the icon pop up on your desktop. Okay, now that Retrobat is installed, we need to add some games. So we're going to navigate to the Retrobat folder in File Explorer and find the ROMs folder. Now I'm going to insert a USB drive I have with some ROMs saved on it. And basically what I'm going to do is drag the ROMs to the correct folder in Retrobat. First, I'm going to add some Sega Genesis games, also known as Sega Mega Drive. Uh, in Retrobat, the folder is going to be called Mega Drive. So we'll just find that. And there it is. And there's my folder. And I'm just going to copy over some games over here. Not all of them, just a few. All right, now that I've added some games, I did a few more systems, and now we're going to open up Retrobat. And we are now in Retrobat. Uh, any system that I've added games to will show up here. So I got some Atari 2600, Super Nintendo, Nintendo GameCube. Got some Wii, Thomas Wave, Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, Dreamcast, PlayStation, PS2, PSP. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's basically all set to go at this point. Now, if you've ever used Batocera or RetroPie, 
the menu is going to look basically exactly the same. You have the options of changing uh, themes, uh, scraper options to get artwork, all that good stuff. All right, I went ahead and scraped some artwork for some of my games. And I'm going to update the game list so that artwork shows up. And when I click Mega Drive, now you can see there's some uh, artwork and video there for each game. And we'll just, uh, let's see. Let's see, let's change one of the uh, themes. I can download one of the themes now. Uh, I'll download this first one, maybe this one on top. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Let it download. Okay, now that it's successfully downloaded, I can go ahead and swap out the themes. User interface settings, theme settings. And there you go. Much cooler looking. I like this look a lot. All right, now let's try to start up a game. We'll do Sega Genesis Mega Drive. And let's try Aladdin. All right, and now we'll try one more game. We'll try PSP, a little Outrun 2006. And don't know what happened to the volume when I was recording this, sorry about that. But as you can see, it runs really well. I used a mini PC for this, but remember this will work on any Windows PC. Uh, as far as BIOS files go, you won't need any until you get up to the PS1 and up from there. Uh, you, then you will need the BIOS files, and you're going to have to just download them, find them on Google, and drop them into the BIOS folder. That's about it for this one, guys. Would appreciate a thumbs up if you can. Thanks so much for watching.